Are you curious what a CEO of a fast-growing $200 million company actually does? Well, in many ways, it feels like sprinting a marathon that never ends. In today's video, we're going to dive deep. and We'll look at a real meaning. Well, I'll walk you through what's happening and what's going through my mind as CEO. To start, let's put things into perspective. Otherwise, what you're about to see will make little sense. So to start, let's look at the big picture. At the deepest level, for me at least, is impact. See, for me, I want to make a meaningful, positive impact on the world. You know, my dad died at a relatively young age. It just reminded me of how short life really is. See, we only live about 5,000 weeks here on Earth. And I often ask myself, how do I want to spend the minutes I have here on earth? And for me, that's always been that I want to make some kind of meaningful, positive impact on the world. Well, that's great, but how are we actually going to do that? Well, for me and our company, the way we can do this is by solving housing affordability. At least here in America, housing costs have risen faster than incomes, and housing has become a large part of the average American's monthly expense. And if we could have a meaningful impact on that, we could have a positive impact on people's lives. See, we're already achieving about a 20 to 30% reduction, and we believe we could hit a 50% reduction. But imagine what that means. That means someday your rent could be half, or your mortgage payment could be half. Think about the impact that that could have on your life. Well, I know what you're probably thinking, which is, that sounds great, but how do you actually do that? Well, the key to solving housing affordability is ultimately to solve construction costs. Our goal is to drive down the cost of construction by as much as 50%. And then as we scale up and produce more and more units, those units come to market and drive down the price of housing for everyone. But solving all of construction is too big for, I would say, one organization to do. So we want to narrow that down even further. And for us, we narrowed it down simply to apartment construction. See, our dream is to become best in the world at building and renting apartments. And to have a shot at being best in the world, we had to be laser focused on that one niche. Okay, well, that's still good, but how, again, are you actually going to do that? Well, to solve the cost of construction in apartments, at least, we're taking innovations from other industries like manufacturing and applying it to the world of apartment construction. And so there are literally 10,000 problems in this space that we have to solve in order to drop down the cost significantly enough. But I'll give you one of the larger ones. It's something called batching. Batching is when we take an entire building and break it into smaller chunks. And then we can coordinate the work better because of those smaller chunks and actually time out our schedule down to the hour instead of maybe the day or the month. And as a result, we can take a project that would normally take about say 15 months to complete and drive it down to nine months. We're going to go into batching in a little bit more depth later, but all of what you're seeing thus far are simply ideas. And frankly, ideas are just a small fraction of what it actually takes to make a dream a reality. At the heart of it, and the hardest part to solve for is this last stage, which is execution. You're about to see execution pan out a little bit in this meeting. This meeting is the construction leadership team meeting, which includes everyone who's part of leadership related to the construction division of our company. And it has a variety of standing agenda items, but the first one you'll see here is the scorecard. The scorecard is a list of metrics that we care most about to help us gauge the health of this division. So with that said, let's jump into the meeting. And to get started, we'll start with the scorecard. Our cost of value stayed about the same. Really, there's a small change with um, Matt's sourcing numbers that he'll go over in a second. Um, final cost, 
is down just a little bit based on that sourcing number. And batch percent complete is down quite a bit. Well, down to 45% while delivery is 33%, but I suspect it's tied to the, the on-site batch percent complete. And then material delivery, they missed one out of 12. Did you notice it? See, all the metrics were doing pretty good, but there was one that stood out. It was called percent batch complete. What the heck is that? Well, to understand percent batch complete, we need to understand the batching system a little bit more. So the way the batching system works is we take a large building and we divide it into smaller batches. You can think of each one of these batches as a unit. So in this building, it has nine batches. The first team will say the carpenters come in here to batch one and frame up the unit. Then after a few hours, they move on to batch two. Following them may be the plumbers. They come in and start working on batch one. And then a few hours later, they all move. Carpenters up a notch, plumbers up a notch, and so on through the building. Percent batch complete measures the percentage of teams that were 100% complete with their batch by the scheduled time. Now, let's think about what happens when one team gets stopped. Say the carpenters are building this unit here. They get stuck, they don't actually get this done. Well, the plumber's right behind them. They're right on track. So where do they go? They can't go anywhere. So they just get stopped. In fact, the entire train of teams behind them all get stopped. So just one group being off with their percent batch complete is enough to throw a havoc, an entire wrench into the entire system. And this is why it's so critical for us to get 100% batch completion. Let's dig deeper to figure out what happened with percent batch complete. All right, uh, Jim is here, so let's hop back to the schedule. Uh, with the bearing walls, all the walls, all the framing, it looks like everything is behind there by several batches. You wanna give us an update on what's been going on? I sure can. Yesterday we had a conversation about why we were getting behind there. One of the constraints was the knife plates. Okay, a couple quick things to point out. First, what are knife plates? Well, knife plates are pieces of metal that go into a wall to hold up a deck. You don't really need to know what they are, other than that we need them to continue the work. Secondly, the spreadsheet you're looking at is our schedule. It's massive. We take an entire building that might last a year and break it down into small chunks that each last a few hours, which creates a ton of cells. But you don't really need to know what's going on here other than to note that the framers are four batches behind, which is about three days. One side point, you see a lot of yellow on the sheet. Normally, yellow means bad, right? Well, in our case, yellow actually means that the team was ahead of schedule. But for us, that's still kind of bad because it creates issues in our overall system. So losing three out of five days is quite bad. And if left unaddressed, that could cause significant problems. So let's understand what happened. Dan, what's the update from Eve on those knife plates? Have we been addressing that issue or is that a concern? I happen to see lots of work being done on them. I didn't, I, I couldn't give you perfectly, but I can ask Eric right on the other side of my door. I love how Dan took initiative and pulled in the right people so we could understand what really happened with those knife plates. Okay, Mike and Jim, Eric's door. right here. Where are we at with knife plates? Uh, knife plates are going in the wall now. So we're putting them in here going, going forward. What about the ones that Jim still needs to receive from you so they can put them in there? We have a good chunk of them started. Powder coated primed. We're going to get the last layer of Tanemic on today, so they should be able to ship out tomorrow. It's not going to be all of them that you need for A Tower, but those are coming through the pipe as well. A partial load of A Tower is what they get tomorrow? Yep. Um, Jim, do you know how quickly you need them, or is that enough to know that you're getting some of A now and you've still got to get the rest of A and B and C from us, sounds like? I have been planning worst case scenario, which is receiving them tomorrow, so there's no hang up on my end. It's great to see that the team already solved the issue with the knife plates, but I really want to understand why it happened so I can prevent it from happening again in the future. But first, Jim raised a second issue that I want to dive into next. Okay, so the next issue you mentioned is wind. Walk us through that. What happened and how can we address that going forward? 
ETS win Monday and Tuesday, but then we rescheduled the framing 360 for that day. Um, so we're able to work Thursday instead of them being gone um, for the 360. So we lost, a, so you lost two days and you gained one back by just moving, right? Yes and no. The We lost a day and a half. If we only lost a day and a half, why are we showing four batches behind? Like these four? Yeah. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to clearly understand the core issue. Honestly, that's probably the hardest part about solving these kinds of problems is making sure you identify the actual root issue. And the only way you can do that is by asking why enough times. And that was partly due to those walls weren't built yet. Okay, so you, the walls weren't even built, so they're like it didn't even matter there was a wind day. You didn't even get the walls you needed. Which goes back to producing knife plates. The knife plates were slowing these walls down because I know Eve has shut down a handful of different times. And each time I say, why aren't we producing? They say, framers, uh, it's too much wind. They're not making, so we aren't. So my understanding is is they aren't waiting on steel. They aren't waiting on plans. They shouldn't be slowing you down with a with a wall not delivered. I did not okay. know that the framers were telling Eve not to build. Um, I don't think the like... framers told Eve not to build. I think they're monitoring what is sitting there. And I believe they had uh, all three trailers just kind of sitting there, not getting picked. So they shut down out of necessity not because yeah, they were yeah. told to. Did you see what happened there? There was a communication issue. See, the framers stopped because of the wind and the factory stopped because of the framers. Then when the framers started up again, the factory may not have been notified soon enough. So the framers got held up because the factory wasn't producing the walls that they needed. I guess at a high level, this is a big concern of mine, right? We had wind that was a day and a half. We had some knife plates, which were probably another day and a half, but everything compounded and now we have a four batch delay. When, as you can see the schedule, we were actually ahead and now we're significantly behind, right? Four batches behind all thrown into one week. I really want us to spend a little bit of time, understand what happened and what we can do to like, how do we prevent that from happening? Cause even, so we can address the wind, the knife puts a little bit harder to address, but the bigger issue there is just the compounding effect of maybe miscommunication and, and misalignment between the teams that I think could help improve that next time we run into a problem, we won't have as big of a compounding effect. I don't know, what do you guys think? So I, I would agree, communication is key there. I, I think the missing piece here is Jim and I, or or Dean and I, we don't communicate back and forth about what where we're at, what we're missing. Eric and Matt or Brandon communicating continually. So I, I believe those two know exactly the answers to all these things. I think. Jim and I are are guessing at some stuff. I love that Dan pointed this out. We reached a point where we really need to spend time with the core people involved to actually solve this issue. Would some of you be willing to take this as a project this week to kind of dig into this and talk with the teams and see if we can or address the issues that are causing the problems? Yeah. I've actually already partially started doing that, Mike. Um, so oh, yesterday okay. I, had, I asked Eric for his build list for the week um, showing us how to get back on tax. And then based on that build list, um, Matt is going to give me his plan, how to get back on tax by the end of the week. Okay. So that's awesome to get us back on track. I think that is, that's the big chunk of the problem. The, the deeper point I want us to work on is what caused this and how do we solve the underlying cause beyond just fixing it right now? You're saying look for root cause. Yeah. Understanding what's the root cause of that compounding it's the fact that we only had a day and a half of lost time, but we have four batches lost of production. So you can make three sub points. It would be as addressing wind because weather and wind will happen again. And then knife plates, that might be a harder one to solve, but how do we identify those things sooner if possible? And if not, how do we respond to it faster? And then the last one is the compounding effect. I love that Jim had already solved this problem and was working with the team to prevent it from having a negative impact on the rest of the team. This is fantastic, but I'm always challenging our teams to think deeper. I want to solve the core issue, the root issue of this problem so that this problem never arises again. And that was what Dan was tasked with addressing. 
This to-do was added onto our to-do list, and next week, Dan will follow up and provide us insight in what happened and how he worked to solve the problem. So that's a deep dive into one issue during one meeting. There are dozens of issues per meeting and dozens of meetings per week, so there are a lot of things to work through. This video was requested by a subscriber, and if you would like us to make a video, let us know in the comments below, and maybe the next video you watch will be inspired by you. Thanks for watching.